Hi everybody, welcome to my channel, Ashley Says So. I am Ashley and I am just starting out so I don't have any of the huge equipment or you know the stuff that other YouTubers have but um, I wanted to make a channel. I don't know, I read a lot, I love history um, and I just love everything informative so this channel will feature lots of different things. Most of it will be historical and about old-fashioned things. And if you like that sort of thing, then hit subscribe and I'll keep the videos coming. Bye! First up is Blonde Hollywood bombshell Barbara Payton. This buxom beauty was born on November the 16th, 1927 in Cloquet, Minnesota. She was a very wayward young lady from the start. For instance, at the age of 15, she went to a friend's birthday party and lost her virginity to said friend's 45-year-old father in a locked bathroom. The scandal, child. The scandal. You may look at this as a rape, but Barbara sure didn't. As a matter of fact, she slept with the man at least three more times. As long as he gave her something shiny for her favors, everything was all right. Then at the age of 17, she married Air Force Captain John Payton, and for their honeymoon, she begged him to take her to Hollywood. Little did John know that when it came time to leave, Barbara would not be coming with him. So she stayed in Hollywood, taking modeling gigs here and there, and then she got her first screen test and fainted while there. When she awakened in the hospital, she was dismayed to learn that she was pregnant. So she went home to her parents where she gave birth to a son and promptly left him there for her parents to raise and returned to Hollywood to chase her dreams. Barbara was fortunate enough to have kept her figure after the birth, and she quickly became an escort to some of Hollywood's most powerful players, including Bob Hope, Clark Gable, Guy Madison, and many, many more. It was affairs like these that helped her land the part of Holiday Charlton alongside James Cagney in the hit movie Kiss Tomorrow Goodbye. The role would skyrocket her to fame and soon she was rubbing shoulders with some of Hollywood's elite. One of those shoulders she rubbed was the shoulder of friend Chotone, a classy, dignified actor that always played those distinguished gentleman roles. French Show was so taken by her beauty that he wanted marriage right away. But Barbara convinced him to just date a while longer, saying that she didn't want to get married so fast. But the truth was, she had already met the hunky bit player, Tom Neal, and using her words, he made her blood sizzle. So while dating friend Joe, she started to date Tom Neal as well. Always one for publicity and drama, Barbara made sure that she and Neil were photographed wherever they went, something that infuriated Tone. It all came to a head one night in 1951, when the 37-year-old Neil got into a fist fight with the 46-year-old Tone. Now remember, Neil was a bodybuilder. He beat Tone into a bloody pulp. He broke his nose, his cheekbone, he gave him a brain concussion, and that was amongst several more injuries. Barbara was delighted with the uproar that surrounded her. I mean, come on, two actors fighting over her? You couldn't buy that publicity. In the end, though, she claimed that Neil was a brute and that she hated him and that she really loved Tone and that she would marry him. What Barbara didn't know though was that the public was growing tired of her being in the press constantly with her men troubles. 
She had already made front page news, not even a year ago, when she was dating a drug dealer and he beat her landlord up for demanding that they pay the rent. She did keep her promise though, and she ended up marrying Tone, which only lasted 53 days before she was back in Neil's arms, never having completely given him up. The scandal, child. The scandal. And what a scandal it was. She may as well put a gun in her mouth and pull the trigger. Once the public found out that she was back with Tom Neal, all sympathy for her disappeared and they were done with her, which spelled death for her career. The studio dropped her contract faster than you can count to 10. And although she and Neal did a few low budget movies and a few road shows, she was done in Hollywood. Eventually, even her beloved Neil left her, and she became broke and destitute. So she started prostituting and even ended up being stabbed a few times in the process. Barbara's story came to a tragic end on May 5th, 1967. That's when she died on the bathroom floor of her parents' home due to liver and heart failure. She was 39 years old. Next on our list is Mr. Soulful, ladies' man himself, Sam Cook. Sam Cook was born on January the 22nd, 1931, in Clarksdale, Mississippi. And from a very early age, he knew that he was going to be a star. Sam started singing gospel as a young boy. And by the time he turned 16, he had joined the very, very black popular gospel group, the Soul Stirrers. Now, when it came to black gospel music around the 1930s, 40s, 50s, and 60s, the Soul Stirrers were a quartet. And that meant they were at the top of the line. It was an honor and a pleasure to join this group. And Sam joined as a lead singer. He was everything on the scene. After a while, though, Sam got tired of singing gospel. It just didn't pay like secular music, so he wanted to try his hand at that. He didn't want to disappoint his gospel fans, though. So what he did was to record a secular song on a record, but he changed his name. But he wasn't fooling anyone. And the very next gospel show he had, the church mother sat him down and told him that they didn't want to hear him sing anymore because they had heard that worldly music that he had recorded. After this, Sam threw his hands up to the gospel scene and he left for the secular side for good. Sam knew that as soon as he burst out onto the scene, he was going to be a star. So before that happened, he rushed to marry his high school sweetheart, Barbara Campbell, in 1959. And together they had two children, a daughter and a son. Sadly, the son passed away in the family swimming pool at two years old. Sam was off on the road when this happened. And the stories say that he could never forgive his wife for the mistake that she made. And although he was already cheating and already pretty much a ladies man, there's tale that that accident with the son pushed him even further into the arms of other women. The word on the street was that Sam Cook had a woman for every town. No matter where he went, there was always at least one person ready, waiting to bed him once he stepped off that stage. This, however, led to his downfall. On December the 11th, 1964, Sam did a show at a small club in Los Angeles. After the show was over, he left with a known prostitute named Eliza Boyer, and they checked into the Hacienda Motel. And this is where things get a little hazy. 
all the police recorded is that sometime during the night, they got a call from the hotel manager, Evelyn Carr, saying that she had shot Cook in the chest. When the police arrived, they questioned Carr even further, and she told them that Eliza Boya came running to her office saying that she had been kidnapped and that the man that had kidnapped her was chasing her and trying to rape her. After hearing this, Carr started hearing banging on the door, which indeed was Cook saying, let me in, let me in. When Carr would not open the door, Cook burst in, and at that point, she shot him in the chest twice. He was naked, wearing nothing but a jacket. The days after Cook's death, more details started coming out about Elisa Boyer and Evelyn Carr. For one, the police found out that Boyer was a prostitute, and they started to believe that Boyer and Carr were in cahoots with one another. The story goes like this. The police had started to believe that Elisa Boyer went willingly to Sam Cook's room with him. She waited until he got naked, ready for sex, and he possibly went into the bathroom, nobody knows what for, but then she stole his clothes and his money, and she went inside Evelyn Carr's room, which is the hotel owner. Once she got into the room, she was able to tell Evelyn that she was raped and kidnapped, and therefore that would make Evelyn grab the gun to shoot Sam Cook. But the police also questioned that. Why would Evelyn Carr be so willing and so quick to pick up a gun to kill Sam Cook? He was a famous singer. So that's when they really started trying to tie two and two together, and they actually learned that possibly Evelyn Carr and Elisa Boyer were working with one another, that they had done this to countless men. Most of the time it didn't end in death, but they had done this before. But they did not investigate any further. They let the case grow cold, and everything ended with Sam's death. Man, how sad is it to die naked in a doorway with only a sports jacket and socks on? Ugh, it's terrible. By the way, he was only 33 years old. Next on our list is Gail Russell. Gail Russell was a very popular actress around the early to mid-1940s. She was born on September 21, 1924, in Chicago, Illinois. Gail's life was not really as scandalous as some of the others on our list, but she was known as the drunken actress. Poor lady. She did have some luck in life, though. In 1949, she married actor Guy Madison, but they got divorced in 1954 because even he couldn't put up with her drunken ways. Everything came to a head one night when she drove her car straight into a store. Yeah, pretty bad for Gail. She ended up not being able to control her drunken behavior at all. So she was dropped by the studios and her career was over very, very quickly. In the end, her life was over just as quickly. She died on August the 26th, 1961, at the age of 38, caused by acute alcoholism. Next up is singer Jenny Ace. There's not much to say about Jenny Ace, except he was born on June 9, 1929, and he was a great singer who was on his way to stardom. But on Christmas night in 1954, Johnny decided to go backstage and play Russian roulette. And guess what? Johnny lost. The scandal, child. The scandal. Our next celebrity on this list is Milton Burrow. This funny man was born July 12, 1908 in New York, New York. And you may be wondering, what's so scandalous about good old Milty? 
Well, here it is. You may not believe this, but Milton Beryl was quite the ladies' man. His affairs consisted of Veronica Lake, Lucille Ball, Hedy Lamar, and Nancy Reagan. Oh, don't be mortified at the Nancy Reagan, because at the time she was still Nancy Davis, a small time Hollywood actress. The biggest notch on his belt, though, was his affair with Marilyn Monroe. That's right, this little snarky faced, glasses wearing comedian bagged Marilyn Monroe. And that's amongst several more leading ladies. Do you know how Beryl was able to bag all of these hot, hot babes? It's because he was rumored to have the biggest you-know-what in Hollywood. That's right, old Milty was packing heavy tools, and he used them on at least half of the leading ladies of his time. I don't know how scandalous that is, but try to get that out of your mind the next time you see him on TCM. I bet you won't be able to. Up next is Lana Turner. This Hollywood screen goddess was born on February the 8th, 1921, in Wallace, Idaho. Lana was one of the hottest sirens on the big screen in the 1940s and 50s, and her life was relatively normal. Well, as normal as a Hollywood star's life can be. But everything changed on the night of April 4th, 1958. That's when Lana's boyfriend, Johnny Stampanato, the ruthless enforcer for gangster Mickey Cohen, was murdered. You may be wondering why this is so scandalous, because gangsters die all the time, right? Well, it's scandalous because Johnny was killed by Lana's daughter, the 14-year-old Cheryl Crane. The story, as it was told to police, is that Cheryl was protecting her mother from one of Johnny's many severe beatings. Lena agreed with this, and the stabbing was rude justified. There were many other stories abound, though, that said the reason for the stabbing was different. But I tend to believe Lena and Cheryl's story. Do you? Up next is one of the most tragic figures on this list, Clyde McFadder. Clyde McFadder was born on November the 15th, 1932 in Durham, North Carolina. And from a young age, he was famous for his high falsetto voice. He was also one of the only male child singers to be able to retain his high pitched singing voice up into his adult age. Other stars were unlucky with this, such as Frankie Lyman. Clyde found great success when he formed the hit group The Drifters and became their lead singer. Although The Drifters were at the top of their game, after a while, Clyde wanted to try his hand at going solo. So he let Jackie Wilson take his place as the lead singer for The Drifters and struck it out on his own. It was the biggest mistake he would ever make. Being a solo artist, he found little to no success. No matter what he tried, he just could not find an audience for his music. His depression worsened when Jackie Wilson left the Drifters for his own solo career and became a huge star, surpassing McFadder in every way. Unable to deal with failing so badly, McFadder took to drink and decided to drink his pain away. He succeeded in this, but he also drank his life away. In an interview right before his death, Clyde was asked when he would do new music for his fans. His answer was that he had no fans. I know, I know. Where's the scandal in that? True, his life was tragic, but that's not scandalous. 
Well, you want scandal, child? Do you want scandal? Get this. Clyde had a secret love child with the singer Ruth Brown. That's right. The mama he treats your daughter mean was actually the mean one herself. Because while she and Clyde carried out their affair, Miss Brown was very, very married. In fact, she let her husband go on believing that the child was his. It wasn't until after Clyde's death that Ruth finally revealed the truth. I have included a picture of their son down below. He's a singer and an actor and even had a small part as the Platters lead singer in the movie Why Do Fools Fall in Love. See, I told you, the scandal child, the scandal. So, what did you guys think of the video? Let me know down in the comments and don't forget to subscribe. Thanks for watching.